The Cray twins uh, were a couple of working class East End Londoners, identical twins, who became, for a period of time, the most powerful gangland um, power in London. And the film covers probably the apex of their power and their eventual downfall. This is very much a 60s film. It's about uh, that extraordinary time across the world, but in particularly in London, when uh, barriers were going down in terms of social class and gender and race. Um, and Nipper Reed really stands in opposition to that, as we've conceived him, as myself and Brian have conceived him for this film. Um, we have. We've positioned him really as a man of the establishment, a man who would probably prefer it to be the 40s and the 50s than the 60s, a man who's, uh, this is as we've conceived him for the film, a man who's intimidated and threatened by uh, the, the hippies, uh, the immor immorality as he sees it, um, or the looseness of the 60s, and the criminal activity of the, uh, of the craze. I have identical twin brothers. They're eight years older than me, so I've made a study of twins. I think um, what I've found with my own brothers is though there's a huge physical resemblance, there are massive character differences. There are mannerisms and things which are uh, they have in common to an extraordinary degree, as the Cray twins did. But positioning, you know, the elder twin and the younger twin is important. Positioning the family is important and it's formative. Um, definitely my elder brother Keith looks after Alan and he was only out 20 minutes before I don't know how that's reflected in the twi in the Cray brothers because that's Tom's that's Tom's area um, as I understand it uh, Ronnie was a homosexual uh, he suffered depression he was on antidepressants there are rumors that Reggie was gay also but was closeted um, but that's why the film's called legend because there are so many legends uh, both created by themselves and by the media and by time we were always you know from the first meeting we were always on the same page he's very collaborative he takes it all with a pinch of salt he works very hard he's a lovely guy really talented and it's been a very happy shoot you know and very productive When I was coming through as an actor, and still to this day, the big heroes were Gary Oldman and Daniel Day-Lewis, and I think Tom is bracketed with those two from what, from what I've seen. He's got that kind of ability and charisma. Uh, you know, he's one of the great British actors. It's a film about a very, two very complex and distinct performances and there's a real thrill in the idea of watching an actor do both and find the difference. But you've also got actors like David Thewlis in this, uh, you've got the, the Francis storyline which I think is very important. It's always in these very violent masculine environments it's always the women who suffer and Francis's storyline really She's the tragic arc through it, the dark star. Um, her experience and that performance is, is pretty extraordinary as well. Um, but it's a performance film. There's a surprising degree of humour in it. It's not, you'll see that when you speak to Brian. Brian's got a great sense of humour. Um, and that's in there. Whether we like it or not, they're human beings. And it's a, it's a kind of forensic analysis of their psychology in a very exciting time in London, in the world.